This is a spindle head tramming kit which can be downloaded, 3D printed and assembled with commonly available 3D printer parts. The tool is designed to tram and set the spindle head of my CNC machine to the wasteboard along the X and Y axes so it cuts square and accurately. You can also use it while taking precise readings to level a pillar drill bed as well. There are simpler ways to set spindle heads but I wanted a dedicated tool which I can eventually make a box for, which is actually the aim of most making tasks, to make something which eventually needs a box. So what do you need to make this? Well you need a 3D printer to start with and the 3D printer parts. These include two identical cradles which will accept the dial gauges and a central part which accepts a shaft that clamps into the spindle collet. I 3D printed these parts out of PLA. You will also require 14 M8 locking collars with 14 replacement M4 4mm dome machine screws, two M8 thick washers, two 8mm diameter and 380mm long ground steel rods, as well as another ground steel rod at 100mm long. You'll also need four M4 10mm grub screws, two M5 thin sliding T-nuts, two M5 25mm long machine screws, and finally two dial gauges. The tools you will require are the correct size hex key, a feeler gauge, a vernier caliper, and a small engine is square. You'll also need a bench vise, but if you don't have one, you can use a parallel clamp. And you may need a eight millimeter reamer, but that really depends on your 3D printer. Oh, and you need a 3D printer. If the tolerances are good on your 3D parts, you should be able to push the rods into position without having to ream the holes. But different 3D printers produce slightly different results. So if the holes are undersized, carefully use the reamer to size the holes. I used a reamer for the horizontal holes, but I didn't use it for the vertical hole, which accepts the ground rod which clamps into the collet. Okay, this feels really rigid. It's actually quite good. I'm going to pop to the 3D model of the assembly, just so I can point some different features out. Here you can see the central 3D printed part with some additional bracing and the side pieces have two holes in either ones that are hidden by the dial gauges. If I zoom in here, this section here is where the grub screws go and can adjust the resting position of one of the dial gauges. Here is where the T-nut goes and the locking machine screw tightens through that onto the dial gauge. Although I've done the dial gauge as two different sections. You can see all the different locking collars in position and if I zoom a little bit further you can see the washer there and another washer under there as well. I haven't done the details such as the threaded holes on the locking collars but later when you see the final version of this jig you'll notice that I've used M4 dome machine screws instead of the previously supplied grub screws which I found would lose their uh, shape as I was tightening them so I got rid of those and used something which needed a bigger allen key. Once that was assembled I then had to center the middle 3D printed part. To do this I measured between the cradle and the side of the middle part with a vernier caliper. I measured either side and then subtracted the two sums together. I then divided that which gave me the distance I needed to move the central part. In my case one side was 53.3 millimeters and the other side was 52.5. I subtracted those to equal 0.8 which I then divided by 2 to get 0.4 millimeters. To make this movement of only 0.4 millimeters I used my feeler gauge. I unlocked the locking collars on the appropriate side, placed the feeler gauge between the collar and the 3D printed part, and then retightened the collar. I could then push the part against the collar, knowing that it would only move 0.4 millimeters. I could then move the opposite locking collar to clamp that in place. The hole in the central part, which accepts the 100 millimeter ground steel rod, was actually a little bit loose on this version, but I resized that for a later 3D print and push fitted it in with the bench vise nice and tight. I'm now going to cut to the latest version of the tramming jig installed on the CNC machine and start with setting up the dial gauges so both are zero to the same point. 
start with both dial gauges fully installed into the cradles and the dial needle set to zero when the probe is not pressed. Now with the jig positioned along the X axis, lower the Z axis until the first probe touches. Make a note of which side that is. Carry on lowering until the second makes contact. Here you want the dial needle to just move before you stop travelling downwards. You then need to rotate the jig 180 degrees and loosen the dial gauge which had moved first. In this new position you're going to lift the dial gauge so the probe just touches the wasteboard and then lock that position. This is where those grub screw holes I pointed out in the 3D model might come in useful for fine adjustments. Although in this version I'm just eyeballing it. What this process does is sets the jig to the spindle so the endpoints of both dial gauges when joined with an imaginary line, intersect the spindle at 90 degrees. If I were to take a dial gauge out for whatever reason, I'll need to set the jig up all over again following the same process. I'm now tramming the jig along the x-axis, which involves carefully loosening some select machine screws and pivoting the spindle so the dial gauge is read within 0.2 millimeters of each other. I'm very careful here not to let the entire assembly slip and crush either my fingers or the jig. And once this is done, I tighten the appropriate machine screws. I can then perform the same tramming process with the y-axis. Once everything was square and tightened, I did a visual check with a parallel ground rod in the collet and a small engineer square. I used the light from my phone to check the bleed between the edges of the tool and the rod. It was pretty bang on. But where you will notice the real improvement is when you surface level your wasteboard with a wide tool and large percentage step over during the passes, where you'll notice the wasteboard will be a lot smoother. Anyway, that's the jig, which I'll make available through a link in the description with the parts needed. If you can make it, I hope you find it an interesting process and a useful tool. I'm gonna to leave that video here. I hope everyone is well considering all the madness that is happening in the world. And as always, don't forget to sacrifice a thumb to the algorithm gods. And the thing I always forget, press that bell button because it means you get notifications when a new video is up. And at least in this channel, most of them are not gonna be mental. Thank you.